feel if you poll society today? How many people would say, I don't care if you believe in God or not, how many people would say you feel like something bad is coming down the road? Who would feel that way? Let's see some hands. You feel like that. It's all around us, right? And so what does the Bible have to say about that? Where are we? Are we spiritually sleepwalking? Are we paying attention to what we need to be paying attention to? So we start a brand new series next week called The Road. I want you to be here. It's very Pathways-esque. Uh, I would say next week. How would I word next week? We're going to punch you in the face. And it's going, to start in a, it's going to start in a dark place, but it's going to end completely different than it begins. The series, The Road, is going to take us all the way to the cross and the empty tomb at Easter. So for eight weeks, we're going to journey together. It's going to be fascinating. We're going to learn a lot. Hopefully, we lift our heads high for our redemption draws near. We just need to be paying attention to what's going on in our world. There's such a staggering loss of faith. So many weird things happening but thanks for being here today. Today's going to be different. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's going to be different today. We're going to talk about not just coming to church and hearing a sermon, but how we can be the church. We're going to be challenged at looking at the next seven years in the life of our church. We're really looking from 2023 all the way through the rest of this decade. What does the vision of our church look like? And so we're going to talk about that today. It's going to be really different. We're going to close with baptism, life change on display. How many do we have in this service? Nine? Ten? Nine? Nine. Nine. So we're, we've, we've baptized all week a ton of people. This is the worst thing for a preacher to say, but I have so much to say about the vision of our church. We're baptizing too many people today. You know, that's... But that's amazing. That's what it's all about. So if, if we need to, Jeff, I know we're finding some seats. Guys, um, it's been pretty unexplainable this week. It started Wednesday night. We had 800 people in the first service the largest of the week. We had 600 at 7 o'clock. We had 615 last night. We had just under 700 people in the first service this morning, despite the rain. This will be the lowest attended service of the week, so you pick the right one to come to. Um, I have a feeling it has more to do with vision than it has a lot to do with the hoodies that we're giving out. But it is vision week, so if you call us church home, we've had it. So we'll have over probably 3,200 people come to church in the building this week which shatters a non-holiday record ever, so that's pretty cool. So if you're visiting, perfect week to be here. But if this is your church home, it really is a perfect week to be here as we talk about a lot of things to be most efficient and most effective in, in kingdom building the rest of this decade. So I want to start with this. Uh, I told the staff I was going to end with it. They said, Brent, you need to start with it. Let's talk about our property, our church property. I'm going to go slow here for just a second because we've got a lot of new faces that have been around our church the last six to seven to eight months, and you don't even know that we have church property across the street. Somebody came up to me last week when I talked about we're going to give a property update, and they're like, what, what are you talking about? Do we have church property across the street? Here will be the video if you don't know it. Most of us do. Right across Dolly Parton Parkway, just that direction, we have purchased just under 19 acres the old Birchfield farm, we purchased half of it. The school system purchased the other half. In early 2021, right in the middle of the pandemic, we began the process of seeing if we could secure the future growth of our church across the street. Talking about a weird church where churches are dying, we're like, let's buy property. In 2021, January, we started to look at that. It took us all year. Finally, on December the 30th, 2021, we secured the property. We closed on that property next door to the whopping tune. It'll come on the screen. Ready? This is what that cost us, $3.125 million, a colon cleansing moment for me for sure. That's a lot of money, a lot of debt to take a church into where a church, we don't have debt. We've been in this building for 15 years. Well, the, the first version of this building, 15 years ago in three months, we walked into our very own building for the first time. What God has seen in this church is unexplainable. Uh, we, we had some debt. We've expanded. We had other campuses. We've done the teen center. You name it. We've spent millions of dollars in the last 15 years. In a few months, you're going to hear me talk about 15 years of this church. We have given north of $4 million in local missions, being God's hands and feet in the community in 15 years. Pretty cool. And yet we're a church with no debt until we went into debt last year. Mother's Day nine months ago, we 
said, hey, it's time for us to believe for greater days. Let's give above our tithes and offerings. This is where we were at. Most of you know this. Some of you don't. We gave and committed last Mother's Day, nine months ago, $1,772,000 to pay off the property. Now, that's given and committed. We're still on our commitments. Some of you are like my wife and I. We gave and we committed for a year, and we still have three more months of that commitment, so continue to do that. Our goal is to get out of debt and then to move forward. But life is life. Some people committed certain amounts of money that never came in, uh, just for maybe financial hardship, uh, divorce, some things that happened, and people just couldn't give, and that's how it always works. But yet when, I know this, when God is the resource and we are the conduits, God typically opens another conduit if a conduit is needed. God gets the credit. We do the work, but we give. And so here's where we're at today. This is pretty much a miracle. Where are we, what we actually owe? Here we go. Ready? We now only owe $994,852. So... That's real time. That's what we owe. We still have more commitments coming in, so that number will drop. But we, y'all, all of us, we gave $2.13 million in nine months real money to pay off church debts. We are under a million. The snowball is rolling downhill. Somebody can stroke a check right now for that amount, and we got it. <laughs> Want us to do it together. So here it is. The seat pocket in front of you, you will find a Believe For It 2023 card. It's a different card than you've had in there in, in the past year. I want you to get it out. I want you to look at it. Every family in this church, if you call this church home, man, I want you to pray about this. In three months on Mother's Day week, May the 10th, 13th, and 14th, we will once again, and we will come together, and we will believe for greater days ahead by paying this debt off. Here's our goal. Everybody ready? Our goal for this offering is $1.2 million. Why that? You're like, Brent, you just showed me we only owe 994000 well, we have already secured an engineering firm that has begun to build a master site plan, and that site plan is going to cost us $200,000. You're like, what? That's a lot. Well, that's the world we live in. You're like, is that a blueprint for a new building? No, that's just the master site plan, and then we'll move forward. So our goal, 994000 plus 200000 is 1194000 but preachers round up. So our goal is $1.2 million, and I want you to pray. Really begin to pray and plan what you can do, all of us together, to see this be knocked out. Our goal is by Mother's Day, if not the end of 2023, we will be once again debt-free, and we will have property secured. We're going to start to begin to build site plans. Uh, we're really putting together designs to what, what can we build as we move campuses next door down the road. You're like, well, Brent, if we get this paid off and... Mother's Day, are we going to break ground in June? No. we got to be conservative. We're walking through this very um, cautiously at this moment with building supplies and interest rates. we got to continue to put money in the bank. So obviously we need way more than that, but we're going to take it a step at a time. I told you we would never think of building or doing anything as long as that we have debt on the land, that debt will be paid for, but we still got to keep putting money in the bank. So when God says go, we go. And so after 2023, we will shift from believe for it to build for it. And we will go from there. We will take it a step at a time. But I, I'm so, here's what I'll say. Go, God, go. And I'm so thankful for you. We as a church in the world that we live in still believe that the church is the light of the world and a difference needs to be made. So thank you. Thank you. Please pray what you can do in three months. You'll hear a little bit more about that, but we're going to come together in, in, in Mother's Day week to believe for it one more time. This week, you guys wrote, we wrote checks to two different organizations to be God's hands and feet. You guys gave $5,000 to the Pregnancy Center of Sevier County, which we've partnered with before. They've opened their doors in Sevier County this last year uh, with the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Last year, I told you that we wanted to put our money where our mouth is and just not cheer on that decision but how can we help women in need? And so y'all wrote a check for $5,000 to the Pregnancy Center of Sevier County. You also wrote a check for $5,000 to the Sevier County Food Ministry, just once again being God's hands and feet. We got to continue to make a difference each and every day, each and every week. So I'm excited about Next Door. I do believe we'll see greater accessibility, greater visibility, greater day-to-day -day impact. That's my goal, impact, day-to-day -day impact in a growing community 
for the future. So the next seven years, our course is set. We are going to get serious about it, and we're going to see God move. If you've seen the crowds this week, and really it's just been people coming out of the woodwork who call this church home, maybe it's a free hoodie, but I think God is doing something. We've seen it all month long. God is moving in our midst. A sixth church service is, in, is imminent. We have five identical services. We're going to be adding another service very soon. Talk to you about that in a few minutes. So we're just going to set the, we're going to set the tone today. We're going to set the stage today for things to come. So I want to pray with us. Ushers, come forward. Let's get ready to give. Pam's going to come out and sing Believe for it. It's the standout song in this last year in our church, just to once again get our minds on the vision of the church, not just coming to church, but be in the church. God, be with us. Be in this offering. Be in this service as it sets the tone for this season to come. Thank you that we get to close with life change on display. That's what it's all about. It's about one life at a time, making Jesus Christ famous. He's the Lord and Savior of our lives. Boy, boy, I'm so thankful for the gift of salvation, a gift that we do not deserve. And I'm so thankful just to see life change on display. What a week it's been to see so many people baptized, service after service after service, saying, Jesus Christ, he's my Lord, he's my Savior. God, we need you. Be in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, thanks for coming. If you want to get your worship guide out, I got a few, few simple notes. No big message today. The message is in the nuts and bolts of really what this church is going to look like, some changes that need to be made, some things that we need to celebrate, to be challenged by. So just thanks for coming out on a rainy day. I'm so thankful for you. Uh, God is good. We're going to talk about vision, so I'll start with this. A picture of a lady will come on the screen. You might, you might not know who she is by picture, but you know her probably by name. Her name is Helen Keller. She was born blind and deaf. And somebody asked her one time, she was such an inspirational figure. How many people have heard of Helen Keller? Let's see some hands. Who has never heard of Helen Keller? Well, wow, there's just a few. She was asked one time, she was very inspirational. She, somebody asked her, said, Helen, what could possibly be worse than being born blind? I don't know too many things that could be worse than being born blind. And she said this, you know what could be worse? Being born with sight and having no vision. It's pretty awesome. She couldn't help how she came in the world, but she sure helped how she left it. We can't help help where we are in our world and how our church has been formed in, into this culture, but we sure can make a difference in how we leave it. And so here's what I'll say. I'm going to talk to you about vision for a few minutes. A verse of scripture will come on the screen. A lot of pastors will use this for ministry vision. You can use it for your life. The King James Version says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, people perish. And boy, that's true. There's a lot of churches today, and I'm not going to pick on anybody, but I, I've paid attention, and I'm, I'm, we got to pay attention. we got to be real about it. There's a lot of churches today in our culture that don't have a lot of vision for the lost, a lot of Christians that don't have a lot of vision for their lives. we got a lot of people that are just like overwhelmed in this culture that we live in. Churches are overwhelmed. They just want to shut their doors and go, listen, we don't want this crazy culture into our, our little Christian circle. And we, we know that bad things are coming and the Bible speaks about that. And so we're just going to shut it down. Well, somebody's got to make a difference. Do we have vision to say, wait a minute, God use us in better ways. We are built for the here and now at this church this church is not built for the last 15 years. I think we've only just begun. I believe we have greater days ahead. Lord willing, the creek don't rise and Jesus does not return. We better be found faithful making a difference. So we got to be most efficient and most effective in kingdom building. So a couple of things I want you to write down what vision is. Just I've preached it before, and it's just very simple. I just want you to hear it because it goes to what I'm about to say. Vision is three things, in my opinion. It's first, the ability to see the way God wants us to see things. Vision also includes a faith to believe. Believe that greater days are ahead for our lives, for the life of the church. And also, vision is the courage to do, and that's what I'm after. Vision is not coming to hear a sermon. Vision for worship is actually worshiping. Vision for praying is actually praying that God will be in our lives and bless us as we follow him. Vision for service that we can make a difference in our, in our community is to actually serve. Vision, the ability to see, the faith to believe, and the courage to do. 
Sometimes we can get caught in the good that we miss out on the best. And I've preached it for three weeks now. Surrender is different than giving up. Surrendering to God's will and God's way is important. So when you think of this verse of Scripture, a lot of people might use it out of context. The New Living Translation says it this way, and it's a really great way to say this verse, where people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Has anybody seen that in our culture? Let's see some hands, right? We're no longer accepting God's guidance, so we are running crazy. And I like this commentary about this verse. Do we live our lives in such a way as to ignore God's way? If we ignore God's way, we are going to ignore the way to life. So that's our little charge. That's the sermon for the day. The rest of it is just allowing you to see and feel from our hearts the direction this church is going into the future to be effective in kingdom building, to believe better days are coming. First and foremost, I want to talk to you about a major change that happens today. In 2017, we began to partner with a church in Greensboro, North Carolina, a vision statement which will come on the screen, which we fulfilled to plant a church where God leads. I wrote that 20 years ago this October. Hey, we just always want to breach the walls. It's not just about here. It's about everywhere. So we partnered with a church in North Carolina that was dying. They were down to about 40 people. They were watching us on demand. Uh, They they reached out to us and said, could we be a partner church? We would love to lock in with Pathways. And we took all of our equipment that was hanging out in different storage units, storage rooms, and we gave it to them. And January of 2018, five years ago, five weeks ago, we became Pathways Greensboro. They wanted to become a campus. And so we said, yes, we will do this. We will step out in faith. And so check this out. From day one that we got there to last week, the church has grown five times in size, which is awesome. They have a healthy community, a healthy bank account. They have great pastors and Pastor Michael and Chris Larson. But when I went on December the 18th at the end of 2022 and I went to do our Christmas with family service, I always do it live there. It's been a tradition for five years in a row. I was unsettled in my spirit leaving. I had people ask me, walk up, and they're like, Brent, we live in such a weird time. Is there any way that you could be here more with us live? We really want you here. You're our pastor. I know you're 250 miles away, but boy, we love it when you're here. Is there any way that we could be there more? You, I could be there more. And I'm I didn't tell them this, but I said in my mind, no, this is where I'm called to be. This is my lifelong ministry. This is the community that I've lived in for 27 years. This is the church that God has made a way where there seems to be no way. I love what we're doing there. That's fulfilling our vision, but this is where I need to be. And and I really left thinking, God, I don't know if this is the best church experience for them into the future. And I know all the things that we got to tackle here, and I don't know how much more effort that we can give because I could sense they were starving after this pandemic. They don't want to just come to church anymore and stare at a screen. You can do that at home. We have so many people watching everywhere. They needed a pastor. So I reached out to our campus pastors that we hired three years ago, Michael and Chris, that are still there. And I said, Michael and Chris, I want you to pray about something for me. And I believe it's the right thing. I talked to our elders. They believed it was the right time. It's the the time. Hey, why don't you become the pastors of our Greensboro community? Why don't you stand on your own Come up with your own church name, develop your own leadership team, have your people develop a responsibility for their community like they really haven't had in earnest in five years. They love what we do here. They, they, they They just are in awe of you. They've been to our unified service. They have fall festivals like we do. But honestly, the last few years, we're taking 40 people from here to go do their fall festivals. And it's time for them to step up and say, I have a broken heart for my community, reach it. And they need a pastor in the building that can minister to them every single week and every single day. So I asked Michael and Chris, would you take it? I blew them away. They didn't know what to think. I said, I'll give you some time to think about it, but call me back tomorrow with your decision. (laughs) They actually, I really feel like they, they, this is what they needed and this is what they wanted. They called me back the next day with tears in their voice, tears in their eyes saying, hey, This is a God thing. I can't believe it. We're blown away by this, but this is the right thing to do. So as of today, they will no longer be Pathways Greensboro, but they will be known as the Difference Church. That's the name that Michael and Chris wanted. Actually, God put it in Michael's heart like four years ago, so much so he locked up the differencechurch.com domain name. So it's a God thing. They're excited. I went last Sunday night. I had a great church meeting 
with everybody there. The entire church showed up. It was hugs and loves and cheers and champion on. They're excited. They're scared, but they're excited, and they believe it's the right thing to do. And so as sad as I was, we never wanted to go build an empire. It's not about you and I. It's not about my pride. It's not about building some kind of whatever. Hey, God, I want to surrender to your will and your way because there's a better way to be more effective in ministry. Not only there, but here. It kind of clears the deck here for us to see great, great, great things ahead as we build a dynamic community church day to day to day to day in so many different new fronts. So I want you to hear from Pastor Michael and Chris. Give, it, give me one minute. Just listen to their heart and just let's pray for them as we move forward. But I love, I love, love, love this couple. Listen, listen to their hearts. It's pretty cool. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Michael and Chris from Greensboro. Boy, like Pastor Brent says, you never know what a day will hold. And that is so true. The three of us, we got together and we began to talk about and pray about the Greensboro campus and the direction going into the future. And that conversation ended up with Pastor Brent asking if Chris and I would consider becoming the lead pastors of this campus which we were just blown away with. I think we all had some tears. It was a wonderful moment. Pastor Brent said, I believe this is a God thing. So did we. So we are super excited about this opportunity. We are. We are so excited and going forward, the Greensboro campus will now be the Difference Church. And we can't thank all of you enough just awesome. <laughs> for all the support that you've given us over the last several years, the encouragement, cheering us on. We just love you guys. And we're so thankful for all of you in Sevierville. And we would love for you to partner with us in prayer, partner with the Difference Church as we move forward into a new journey. Yeah, so our tagline is growing in faith, being the difference. And that will preach every time. Just ask Pastor Brent. He really likes the name. You guys are awesome. We love you guys. Keep us in your prayers. Thank you so much. So we go back to how we started in Greensboro. When, when we took over Greensboro, it was known as Grove Community Church. We were their partner uh, for about six months before we, or four months before we became Pathways Greensboro. And now we will go back to being big brother to little sister, but it, cle it clears the way for them to make the biggest difference they can in Greensboro. We're gonna pray like crazy. Uh, they're gonna be a part of some of events that we do. I know a lot of their guys are coming to our men's retreat. Uh, it's just gonna be a really cool thing. George Hawkins, who's a big Pathways guy, he was here uh, Wednesday night and last night. He made the drive early this morning to be over there because he was there the very first day that they became Pathways. He wanted to be there the very first day that they would make this change to the Difference Church. And he's already been there. I've seen him on Facebook. And that's how it's going to be. We're going to pray like crazy for this to go and grow for them to make a difference. So give it up for Michael and Chris, everybody. Cool stuff. It fulfills that vision. We're just continuing to plant a church where God leads. But when we took over Greensboro and became a campus in 2018, the world was not like it is today. The world has changed in the last five years. Uh, I was a hesitant. I was the holdout. We had staff members for a couple of years before the pandemic in 2020. Tell me, Brent, we need to be live streaming the service where people can lean in and be with us real time. And I'm like, no, that makes it too easy for people to sit home in their underwear and watch church. I want you to be here. But obviously through the pandemic, we need to embrace in the building and then we need to embrace people watching everywhere. And so our online campus is unexplainable. This is what's happening in our online campus right now. Uh, we know of in the last three years, we've hit all 50 states, people watching, 33 countries. And right now, conservatively, because we really do this on a conservative level, we have more than 1,000 people a week watching real time with us, either last night, the first service, or this service every single week. We have up to about 5,000 people that are tuning in, different people that have tuned in that call this church their online home, which is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Pastor Mike has done an amazing job. We have online, uh, let's see, life groups. We're now working on online curriculum for all ages. We're going to take this to another level, and we're reaching further and faster than we've ever reached. We are way beyond our South Knoxville campus and our Greensboro campus. Our reach now is faster and further than ever. So here's what I want to tell you. From this day forward in the next seven years, we will no longer be a multi-site church. We're going to have a live dynamic church, which is right here, and we're going to have an online campus, which reaches everywhere. And that is the most, effe most efficient and effective way. Many churches like our church with multi-site are doing this exact same thing. 
because people are no longer wanting to drive across town to sit and watch a screen. They can do that at home in a very real, intimate way like thousands of people are doing right here. Is everybody good with that? It clears the way for you and I to be most effective here and to kind of begin to do ministries, maybe some things that we've not done to reach people that we haven't reached. So God gets the credit. We keep doing the work. The message of Jesus remains the same, but the methods have to change. And we're kind of being innovative into the future. Everybody good. Nod your head. And you're like, Brent, you got a lot of, you're talking a lot today. I'm blown away. All right. I want to clear the deck and I want to talk about our kids ministry, our Club 412 ministry and our teen ministry for a few minutes. Many of you have never walked in the doors of our kids' rooms, our Club 412 experience, our, hang, our teen ministry down in the hangar, which is open every day of the week, free to the community. And I just wanted to expose it to some of you new faces that you've just never walked in there. You don't really understand the dynamic and the massive difference that we're making to the next generation, which is not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. So take two minutes and let's just go through all of these ministries and take a look at what is happening every single week. It's pretty cool. Hangers worshiping with my friends on Wednesday. This place is incredible. Honestly, there ain't no other place like this. Before coming to the hangar, I wasn't really the closest to God, and the hangers helped me a lot. And I come here every week. And then it's like made me want to start volunteering and I started volunteering in the production ministry. The reason why I like the hangar is because the leaders here have helped me through a lot and they have taught me from right from wrong. And also like people here are like really friendly and stuff. And like, it's really fun to come here after school. is getting to be with my friends and how the pastors are so educational and so encouraging and they're really understanding. My favorite thing about 412 is how they give us prizes for when we do good stuff. We read the Bible, we tell scriptures and that's just so much fun to do in church. church is learning about God at my level. My th favorite thing about church is everything. I want to talk to you a few minutes about our kids' ministry, our Club 412 ministry, and our 747 youth ministry. This is my wife, Giovanna. She's been the director of Kids 226 for 16 years. She has a heart for our kids' ministry. It's incredible. You realize two-thirds, way over two-thirds of all of our space is dedicated to these groups, kids, preteens, and teenagers. And if we don't reach them now, we're never going to reach them. So we need your help. Parents, you need to get your kids in 20, kids 226. It's right at their level. I know some parents have this separate, this separate, this anxiety separation. They come to church and kids just don't get out of church what they're going to get out of it next door. And our kids ministry is, uh, is next level. I'm going to say that, of course, you're my wife, but you eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. So talk to everybody about what they can do to help us in kids. In yes, kids 226. I want you to think right now about volunteering in Kids 226. What a great ministry to be a part of. I've heard nothing but great things all week about people that are volunteering saying, we got to get more people. This is great and all this. So, but I have three categories and I think there's one category that you might be interested in. So the first one is being a trainer and you can pick any service, 
uh, that you want, any age group that you want, is 12 times a year. We can do 12 times a year, right? Easy enough for one hour during a service. And then number two, welcome team. You can be a part of the welcome team. We host a family, a brand new family that walks in the door. You take them around, show them where the class is, and uh, have them fill out papers and answer questions and that kind of thing. It's so easy to do that. And then you come to service, so you really don't even miss the service at all. The third one is adopt a room to clean. We need to clean our rooms, our kids' rooms. There's so many germs going, on, going around, and we need to clean our rooms. And this might be a retired person that can be a part of this, where you come either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, during the day, come and clean the rooms once a week, very easy. If that's you, come see me at the blue table right out there. Any of these three categories, I'll answer more questions. But if you love God and love kids, come see me at the blue table. Yeah, if you hate kids, don't even listen to what she said. Don't worry about it. Um, we have great volunteers that clean those toys every week. Uh, we've been doing that forever and a day. That's very important. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Come on, we know that. Uh, but we need some help. If you volunteer in Kids 22-6, let's see some hands. See some hands if you do it. You're the unsung heroes of our church. Thank you so much. Um, but what I noticed, there's about 12 of you in this room with hundreds of people. So we need, we need you guys not just to come to church, but be the church. It's so important. One of the best hires we've hired in a long time is Colin and his wife, Crystal. They're our Club 412 pastors, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. We are tackling a preteen um, dynamic because that is really the attack of the culture today, attacking their identity. And he has done a great job in here a year. You have 150 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders that walk through the doors every week. You're pouring into them. Share, man. Share your heart. Absolutely. So uh, just to give you a little background about 412 and our purpose and our passion um, if you can think back to the very first time that Jesus Christ became real to you, the very first time that the God of the scriptures became real, and it wasn't just as something that your parents, you know, wanted you to be in church or that was their faith or your grandparents' faith or your pastor's faith, but it was something that was real to you. And that's what 412 is about. We have, like pastor said, we have around 150 students that pass through every week, and these students are they're starting to learn their true identity in Jesus Christ and the true identity of who he's called them to be and not what the world or the culture has trying to tell them they have to be. So that's, that's pretty much why we exist and why we do what we do. That's awesome. Give it up for Colin, everybody. Come on. Pastor Matt Samler, who is a gift from God. We love Pastor Matt. Our team's doing an incredible job. He's such a huge part of our church for a lot of years. So thankful for him. Share your heart, man. Yeah, hey, thanks for all of you that pray for us. We have people in this uh, service that clean the hangar for us. Thank you, guys. Um, I'll tell you, uh, with your students, 7th through 12th grade, that's who we hang out with. 600 7th through 12th graders each week. And uh, let me say, some of you have one or two teenagers we have 600, and we need prayer. We need, there's people that uh, volunteer. I know Miranda's right here. We've had them all week in service. Let me tell you, we absolutely love your students. And our goal, our heart is this, is to build a relationship enough with them. So when times are tough, listen, think about it. We, we've all, most of us have been teenagers, and it's hard. You go through things. They're, they're going through a ton of changes in their life. And then magnify it by a hundred with social media, with the phones. It's very, very difficult. So our job, our goal is to build relationship so then when something is, happens in their life, uh, God opens that door that we can come in and we can go, listen, the one that can help you is Jesus. So um, pray for us for sure. We have, if you want to help, please um, Talk to me in the lobby. We'd love to have you guys kind of help out. But something that we're always doing with youth, we're always trying to find ways to improve our ministry. You could go, what? It's so great. It is. It's amazing. But there's ways that we can improve. And I think we've got a, another step of that. Yeah, we're going to make a change this week. So parents of teenagers, listen up. We're changing the times on Wednesday night, which is a very good time for us. Sevier County Schools have deemed this last year that Wednesday nights is a non-competitive time for church, which is amazing. Amazing. Most practices end at four o'clock now. It's kind of back to an old school thought, which I love. So we've seen an influx of teens, but here's what we know. They're at school all day on Wednesday. Right now, the, the format is they have youth up until seven o'clock. Correct. Yep. And then they, they, Matt speaks a sermon to them. There are message on their level. And then all of them, about a hundred of them walk up to our seven o'clock service and they sit through another church service with me. That's too much. That's a lot. And so they're kind of tired 
uh, they're getting a little weary. And I'm basically seeing that he is being shortchanged because he's shortening his messages on their level because he feels like they're here too much. So I love our teens. They love coming to church. They made me feel so great Wednesday night. Many of them are like, man, we love coming. We're still coming to church, but we're making a change. From now on, our youth ministry will be Wednesday night from 5 p.m. to 6.30. So parents of, say, junior hires that were coming at 7, I'm asking them to come at 5.30 on Wednesday. Then they can drive down the hill, pick up their kids, and they can go home, be at home a little earlier. If, if teens want to come up here, they can. They can come up to the 7 o'clock service. The hangar will now close at 7 and they can sit with mom and dad, they can sit with family, but we're not gonna bring them up here as a whole group. It's gonna shut down at 6.30, that way the buses, we shuttle um, students from Seymour and everywhere, the buses will leave and get these kids home at a little bit earlier time where they can get homework done and they can not just come to church and feel like they've been here forever and when they get 18 years old, they're like, I've been sitting in church forever, it's too much. I don't want them to be in, in the building here and having a sermon on top of a sermon after sitting in school for eight hours. I don't expect you to do that. So I want, let's do it the right way. Give Matt the opportunity with his youth staff to preach to them, speak to them, speak life to them at their level. And then if they want to come to church at seven, that's fine. Or they can come back on the weekend with families as well. So that's a new time starting this week, five o'clock to 6.30. Uh, of course, the hangar opens at three o'clock every day. So right. give it up for Giovanna, Colin, and Matt, everybody. Love you guys. Woo. The baptismal class is going to get ready. We're going to get ready to baptize. We've got, again, nine, so we're going to try to get out as close to on time as we can. But I got three more things, and they're quick, but it's important. Get your phones out, if you will. If you can get your cell phones out, and if you scan that QR code on the screen, it's a text to serve moment here. I want to give you an opportunity to serve. And instead of just listening, like, well, where do I go? What do I do? This is very simple. Uh, it used to be you put that number in, you text serve, and people get confused by that. So just scan the QR code, and then it'll automatically, once you click the link, it'll bring you up to that text, everything filled out, just hit send, and it'll bring you up to a menu. A menu will appear, and this gives you opportunities to serve in the different areas of our church. Two areas besides what you just heard I want to highlight to close. Number one, our production team. We need some of you to be trained up to help us run our production team. We have about 10 people behind the cameras and behind the scenes that need to be here every single service as we reach further and further and further outside the walls everywhere. I love it. This ministry is amazing. They're amazing, but we need some help. Some of you, you're like, hey, I'd love to do that. We'll train you. It's easy. Just ask. Uh, we just ask for some commitment. Maybe you sign up for that. Secondly, the parking team. I need about really 20 people, 20 to 30 new faces that will be on our parking team because everybody look at me and this is how we're going to close before baptism. The parking lot is going to derail our growth if we don't watch it. So we've asked a couple of things that have happened this week and it's a God thing. I talked to the city police chief. He actually comes to church here. We've talked, we had some aldermen talk to some other people that help run the traffic lights and all of that because we do have sheriffs that run that light right down here at the, at the intersection. And we need that light to be run longer. And they have graciously said yes. Instead of a one-minute cycle, we can now get some two-minute cycles to get us out of here. Because I want us to be like a NASCAR pit crew leaving church. I want us to clear the parking lot in 15 minutes. But that's going to take a lot of work on everybody's front, everybody, every front here. So it'll come on the screen, and this is what I'm after. Ready? Be mission-minded in the parking lot. I think I'm going to put that on our parking team T-shirts. Mission-minded. Our mission field starts when we leave the church, when we park as far away as we can. If you're able-bodied and you call this church home to leave spots for visitors, when we go out the back and we listen to our parking team and we go with the flow, when we drop the hammer on the back 40 and we don't leave big wide gaps because some of us are on our phone and they have to change the light because there's a 40-yard gap because we are not looking up. We got to move on. When we don't let people out of Walmart, be mission-minded by not letting people out of Walmart. I know they get pushy and they're pushing out. I, you can't help it. But other than that, keep it rolling and wave at them and just point up to the hill. Like, ch think of church. You need to be in church. But we got to do that. So if we can help getting us to the light, we've got, we've got permission from our city authorities to keep the light running longer so we can get out of here. We're having issues with that. and You know that. People come to church and they're like, 
I know I'll go to Thompson Bowling and I'll watch somebody rain a three on us at the last second and, we, and we'll lose the game and then I got to sit in parking for two hours. I can deal with that, but I've heard it from people. Brent, I come to a one hour service. I love it and it's one hour, except for today. It'll be a little longer, but uh, I love that. But I don't like spending 25 minutes to get out of parking. Uh, we need to get that tighter. We need to keep moving. A sixth service is coming. I'm going to be asking you as we continue to sift down and balance the services to think about Saturday nights at 6, think about Wednesday nights at 7 with our youth time. That service will have some room in it. Um, we've got to balance the services. Ultimately, I want Saturday nights to be crammed. We had 600 last night. I would love to see that every week so we can split that into two services. Well, I really would see our, our goal would be 5.30 and 7 on Wednesday, 5.30 and 7 on Saturday, and 9.30 and 11.15 on Sunday to stay balanced. And we're just going to continue to let God go, but we got to be the church. Thank you for listening to me today. I know it's a lot, but some, sometimes we just need these moments to not just come to church, but how are we going to be the church to make the biggest difference in kingdom building into the future? I believe it. I hope you believe it as well. The best is yet to come. Who believes that? Anybody but me? All right. Let's pray. God, as we close this service with life change on display, just thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this baptismal moment. This is what it's all about. Your amazing grace has saved us and set us free. And we're going to show the world that Jesus is Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.